God spiritually intervened in Solomon in the 1970s. I saw a lot of miracles happening. People healed, relationships healed, restored. We experienced revival in the Solomons. Some places we couldn't eat for days. We just worshiped the Lord. <laughs> like to me, it's like a foretaste of heaven. Before I had the encounter with, with Jesus on the 11th September 1972, I was looking everywhere. I was searching for meaning for life. I think I nearly wrecked my life because I was looking in the wrong places. If I continued that road, I think I wouldn't be here today. I would have gone, died wrong. I would wreck my life. When I look back and I saw how Christ changed my life, I guess that's what motivates me now. That other people need the same change in their life. But people are searching everywhere looking for something. And the answer for life really is Christ. He can make a difference in anyone's life. My wife also got converted during those days. And that's when God called us to go out. And we were missionaries from that moment up until now. The relationship grew and we had to uh, do it our traditional way, you know. My people go and ask her people. Finally, we got married. Wonderful person. And we're still going. Prayer is a big thing for me and Florence. We believe the Holy Spirit speaks through the Word of God. And it speaks through our mind. We need to be humble when God speaks to us. And to check with the Word of God. It's like food to us. The most powerful thing is the Word of God. We thank God for the family. We, we have a wonderful family. All live together, work together, and care for each other. Powerful and strong when we are together, when we face life. Good and bad days, but when you have someone who is close to your heart and close to who understands, we go through. We are holding loose to everything. When God calls us, we move. We haven't reached the end of our lives, so he's teaching us more and more things of himself. Mm. God called us into full-time ministry since 1979. And we have moved to different countries. In the last ethnic tension we had, I was part of the peace committee that pulled things together to bring peace in this country. And I used to be the head of SSEC for two terms as president, now they call it bishop. I was uh, privileged to, to take up that position. In 2007, I was the principal of a huge Bible college up in Mount Hagen, Papua New Guinea. And that too was a great highlight of my life when I saw many young people coming from all over the Pacific to study the Word of God. But those are some of the things that the Lord has led me in. I'm passionate about seeing people safe and disciple. Discipleship of people is just a lifestyle. You encourage them, teach the word, and they grow over the years. At the moment, I'm pastoring a church here in town, in Honera. And it's a great church. We have a lot of young people. And over the years, I've ministered in different parts of Soma Island, and I see hundreds of people coming to know the Lord. For me to live is Christ and to die is gain. As long as my heart continues to beat, my life would amplify Christ. It means everything, whatever you do, whether you play soccer or play rugby or footy or you work in a restaurant or you whatever, living for Christ. And for dying for me, it's scary for some people, but I see it as a gain. When I will see God face to face when we are with Him in heaven, sometimes it makes you homesick. <laughs> because heaven's going to be a better place for us. There will be no more sorrow, no more tears, no cancer, no this and that. My final destiny is with God forever and ever. <laughs> Thank <laughs> you.
As I look around and see what's happening in the world today, Jesus is the answer for the world today. He is the Prince of Peace. And if we allow Jesus Christ to take his rightful place as the King of our life and King of our nation, we're going to live in peace with him. The same goes to Solomon Island. The problems today really need Jesus Christ. He'll give us the answer if only we can surrender our nations, our lives to him. And then we'll truly see peace coming into our region, into our countries, and into the world. We see trouble happening all over the world. People are frightened, but I'm not frightened because God has the control. He has the last word. We just keep on holding on and keep on trusting him, allowing God to be the number one man of our nations. That's the hope for the world today. Thank you.